J.T. Crowley is talking books. On this show, you'll hear from emerging talent and seasoned veterans from around the world. Hello, I'm J.T. Crowley, and today I warmly welcome Mark Rogers from Mansfield area, Ohio, in the United States of America, to talk about his book, A Boy's Tale. The book is a sci-fi romance with a deeper message, and that message is that Christianity is about loving one another, not condemning others who have been different, or using the Bible to judge others. The story is told around two main characters, Tyler and Joey. It's about their relationship and how their relationship not only with themselves develops over time, but how their relationship with their own religious beliefs metamorphoses wavering from good to bad to middling. It's religion, is religion, responsible for setting prejudiced orthodox views that isolates people that don't fit the mold? That's a question. This is what this book is about mainly. Mark was born in Mansfield, Ohio and still lives in the area. He has a mechanical engineering degree and retired as a journeyman die maker for a domestic auto manufacturer. With family background in the automotive industry, his main interest is in old car hobby. Mark's talents lie in many fields. He's written many published articles for a car club magazine and published a data and historic reference book. But this is his first undertaking into the sci-fi romance genre. So I need to shut up basically and invite Mark onto the show. So let's bring him onto the show to talk a bit about himself and his book, A Boy's Tale. Mark, come and join me. Well, John, uh, good to, to have you uh, interview me. Uh, been looking forward to it. Uh, we've had a few chats, everybody, off, um, off recording. And um, it's been fascinating to have a chat with Mark um, to see what this book of his is about. So, Mark, but, you know, what I want to do is, before we actually open the book, as I say on every interview, I would like to know a little bit more about you and why you wrote this book. So who is Mark Rogers and why did you write this book? Could you tell to, well, care to tell everybody? Okay. Well, it, uh, I uh, uh, just basically I'm a, an ordinary uh, guy that uh, I had a rough uh, childhood. Uh, I was terribly bullied uh, and uh, the, was uh, a, what affected me for the whole my the whole of my life. Uh, so uh, when I got the opportunity to uh, uh, do something uh, for the benefit of others, uh, I got involved in an online project uh, called the Trevor Project. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to deal with uh, anti-bullying and uh, suicide. And because I I was experiencing uh, some of that myself uh, when I was in school, uh, so I, my work with the kids uh, I, I worked with the the well what I call non straight kids simply because they have the worst statistics of just about any uh, group as far as uh, abuse and uh, a suicide and then uh, just just those statistics are horrible i put the put some of it uh, in the back of my book uh, i can't not help these kids uh, just simply because uh, they, they are uh, i think unfairly abused uh, because of religious uh, beliefs uh, uh, i'm a red letter christian and uh, i believe that God's message was one of love, and uh, homophobia is uh, just the total opposite. It, it just fails on all accounts. So I, that's why uh, I wrote the book. I, I just felt compelled to help these kids. I can understand where you're coming from. And, and when I looked at the book, everybody, 
It's fascinating. It's very interesting. And so there's a story here, but there are also facts and information as well. So mm. actually, let's get on and let's have a look at this book. Um, okay. When I reviewed your book, Mark, there were several areas, you know, chapters of the book that caught my attention. And I do mm -hmm. say on most of my interviews, the idea of the chat is to give people an insight to the book, enough to give them a taste of what the book is about. And if they want to know more, well, go and buy the book or um, go and look at websites and learn about, you know, who the authors are and who these books are and why the authors have written them. And so for, for yourself, you know, your website is www. I'll even start that one again, everybody, www.aboystale.com. So go and have a look at Mark's website. He's laughing at me here from the other side of the screen here. And see what he's about and what his book's about. But now, Mark, I would like to go to the first chapter in the book, which you head up, Personal Discovery. Why did you kick start the book off with this chapter uh, and why the storyline that's within this chapter? And what is the correlation with horses about? Would you care to tell us all? <laughs> okay, uh, the, uh, the basic uh, problem with discussing uh, anything with religion is that... Uh, uh, I didn't want uh, anybody distracted by uh, all other aspects uh, uh, of the problems that uh, religion does cause. Uh, that's why I put it as a sci-fi romance novel. And uh, I needed a, a different type of uh, being rather than a, like a human being. Uh, so uh, I thought, well, a what uh, particular species of animal is uh, most in line with uh, a, the kind of uh, behavior and demeanor uh, that I want my imaginary planet to uh, be populated by. And uh, the fact that horses are uh, basically benign creatures, uh, they are very docile, uh, although well, they can get riled up at times, but uh, they're, they're very uh, uh, integrated with uh, their own species. You know, uh, like uh, you have Clydesdales and uh, uh, thoroughbreds and uh, uh, Palominos, and you can put any uh, breed of horse in with any other, and they all get along. And uh, that seemed to uh, kind of be a, a natural thing. Uh, as far as uh, why I started out uh, uh, where I did uh, with the story. Uh, it was it started out with a uh, Tyler's uh, discovery of a uh, well. He, he was a uh, started growing a tail, which is one of the features of the uh, people on this imaginary planet. Instead of facial hair, uh, like we uh, human males uh, get when we hit puberty, they grow a tail. And uh, the, the fact that uh, he was hitting puberty and, and uh, his tail was starting to grow, that seemed to be a logical place to start the, the story. Uh, I, I, I do want to emphasize that the title, A Boy's Tale, is spelled T-A-I-L rather than T-A-L-E. And that's... Uh, uh, also in my website, uh, aboystale.com. I wondered why oh. it's spelled that way, as opposed to tell yeah. the story. Ah, oh, now I know. There you go. Yeah. Now, Mark, this isn't a big book. Uh, there's 25 very short chapters. Mm -hmm. uh, in chapter two, Days of Reckoning, you talk about uh, Jamie Coulter's suicide never left T.Y.'s mind or Ty's mind. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm going to refer to one of the characters, you know, Tyler as Ty here, everybody. Yeah, it's a um, short... Uh... It is. It's the shortened version of Tyler. Yeah. Um, plus, you know, we've got Ty finding his parents in distress when he came home from school. He's been berated by his father. 
Um, I'm talking about sinful ways. And his parents generally believe that they've done something wrong in bringing him up uh, to create what's happening here. Um, so I would like to ask you, Mark, what is the subject matter of this chapter? Would you care to embellish, you know, you know well, what's going on here? It, it's, uh, I, I tried to include uh, just about everything that uh, a, a young person would experience or could experience uh, in discovering their own sexuality and uh, uh, the possibilities of, uh, in this case, uh, being thrown out of your own house uh, by your parents. Uh, I've seen that happen. Uh, and, the, and that's where the statistics uh, for these kids go right down the, the tube there. Uh, uh, it, things go from bad to worse. And uh, I wanted my character to experience as much of uh, that uh, uh, discovery process and uh, what uh, young people uh, can and sometimes do uh, experience uh, in that process. It's very difficult for them, isn't it? I say again? It's very difficult for them, isn't it? Yeah. It, uh, it, it's uh, a, something that uh, a lot of kids experience and uh, uh, I, I wanted to touch as many bases as possible. Sure. Now let's uh, move on here, Mark, and let's go to uh, chapter eight, um, mm -hmm. new friends. Uh, there's a section where in this uh, chapter, really, where Kyle has found out some stuff about our kind on the net last night. Mm -hmm. uh, Joey and Ty are talking here um plus there's a local underground group that gets together periodically to talk about religion politics and what can be done to change society's viewpoints particularly the attitude of the religious establishment some in those yes. meetings feel that scriptures are being misinterpreted and that they really don't condemn us as hopeless sinners would you care to broaden the contents of the section of this book here and um, just go over what I'm actually talking about here for everybody? Well, it, uh, a lot of uh, very religious people have problems with uh, science. Uh, science uh, deals with uh, only things that can be proven uh, and anything that can't be proven uh, that's religion's territory. It's when religion uh, treads over that line uh, into things that can be proven uh, that uh, there's a problem. And uh, that's where a, when you have uh, a, a difficult uh, situation like uh, they had there, their, their government was a theocracy and they were ruled by uh, their scriptural readings. In this case, a misinterpretation of their scripture. Uh, the, that is why uh, that uh, group of scientists uh, and people who didn't believe uh, quite the way the theocracy uh, said they should believe were all kind of underground uh, as far as uh, trying to uh, communicate with one another. Uh, in, a, in this uh, real world, uh, we do have uh, uh, things that uh, you know, people uh, and, and groups uh, that are above ground, uh, you know, talking about it, but it doesn't seem to uh, affect uh, the religious uh, uh, community uh, that is so hardcore in uh, believing that the Bible is uh, uh, always right and uh, that whatever they read is the way the way they interpret things uh, is the way to go. Uh, that's, uh, I feel, uh, debatable. Uh, I think that uh, we should uh, look at the Bible as a rule book, or as not a rule book, but a guidebook. Uh, Christ himself said, study the scriptures. He didn't say read them. He said, study them. Uh, and uh, 
you have to take everything uh, in the Bible uh, as uh, a something that uh, you want to filter through Christ's message of love uh, and then uh, see if it applies uh, or doesn't apply. The Bible's full of tales of a people behaving badly and that's where a, a, a they cherry pick the bible for these verses and they can easily misinterpret what the the message is supposed to be so uh, that's what i'm trying to uh, illustrate with the uh, story there yeah you know we, we shouldn't judge let's not judge people Yes. Mark, um, talk to me about the grooming session in chapter 13. You know, in particular, the conversation between Kyle and Tyler. What's the message here you're trying to get across? Well, it, uh, it's uh, uh, just a, a, oh, a, something that uh, is part of their domestic uh, uh, relationships uh, that uh, a, a, in grooming the tail there, a, it uh, provides a, a, a little bit of a, a sexual stimulation. A, and uh, so a, the, the horse people, they like uh, to be well-groomed uh, but that's uh, the the realm of uh, their themselves and their partner, and uh, people who are, are not uh, a, like married couples, uh, they have to do something that uh, a, satisfies their need for well grooming, and that's where young people today uh, they have. Uh, uh, outlets uh, that they have to uh, work with uh, uh, within our, our, the context of our own societies. So it's it's just a, a basic uh, fleshing out of our, of my characters and in the differences between horse people and and human people. Did you have? Uh, you know, when you were writing this book, you know, where certain section of this book is very hard for you to write? Oh, uh, probably uh, uh, trying to figure out uh, uh, how to uh, convey uh, the uh, final message uh, with uh, a, well, in, in this case, uh, the, the I call him the great one, which is which is God, uh, the message that God wants us uh, to have and how to get that message uh, through to the horse people. Uh, and that's that's where uh, the uh, uh, the activity of uh, uh, the uh, Clydesdale sons and uh, the a Joey and Tyler clash, and I figured I'd use that to, to get the message across. Okay. Oh. Now, the first date, chapter 14. Mm -hmm. um, here we've got the scene, you know, it's the old feeding cafe, a popular team date destination, open space tables, and more private booths. And it's interesting, Amanda, you, you be the character here, Amanda, um, she is uh, Kyle's so-called girlfriend. And she tells Tyler and Joey, you know, if you want to get intimate that in front of us, that's absolutely fine. Is this section of the book and the contents, you know, the topic of discussions here important enough to you, so much so that you felt it was important enough to talk about it here? Yes, it uh, it's uh, uh, illustrative of where uh, we as a society should should be at because if you notice uh, all the uh, people in that uh, cafe, uh, they were mostly uh, the uh, 
drama club and uh, the Kyle's uh, friends. Uh, the, the word had gotten around uh, about Kyle and, and uh, or about uh, Tyler and uh, Joey, and they were all right with it. And uh, that's the way society should be. Uh, it's like uh, a one uh, a gay couple uh, happened to comment about uh, even just holding hands in our society for for a, a a man and a woman is just fine but for two men or two women well especially two men a, it's looked down upon and a, what what uh, hang up do we have that uh, causes us to uh, view the, that uh, simple act to, of affection as something wrong? Mm. I can see that point. Yeah, yeah I get that. Um, I found, you know, when I reviewed your book, I thought we need to go to chapter uh, 19 and 20. And there is a reason for this, everybody. Now, chapter 19, Centre of the Storm. Is when you whenever you look at the storyline here, um, I think this is very difficult for you to write. For the scene is at the Pastor Joey's house and Marie's. I know they uh, they've come home. There's been a disastrous meeting. Uh, Casey and Chris confess to doing something horrible um, to um, you know to Joey. Uh, the police have come round. Now, I know what's going on here, but would you like to care to tell the audience, the listeners, what's going on here in this chapter? Because it does continue into chapter 20 as well. Yes, uh, it's uh, that uh, 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 Chris and uh, uh, Kurt uh, uh, realise that they have uh, been involved in something that, that is just earth-shattering, or in this case, equus-shattering, uh, that the, it's uh, having a great effect uh, on the whole of society, and uh, they regret having done it. But then, then uh, okay, what do they do now? Uh, and uh, for their parents, uh, it's uh, a revelation that uh, they they have trouble getting uh, getting through, and. Uh, that's a lot of uh, what a a when well when a, a kid find, figures out that he is gay, he has a has a lot of trouble rectifying that uh, or coming out to his parents, and uh, you know it uh, it can be uh, totally uh, earth shattering for him. Uh, sometimes uh, kids are even thrown out of their house when they come out. And uh, it's uh, it's that tearing apart of the family uh, that uh, is so typical uh, when you get uh, this kind of uh, ingrained prejudice uh, in our society. It, it has a terrible effect uh, uh, on just everybody. Yes, it does. And it's all, again, that prejudices um and i suppose orthodox views pretty much uh you know in different parts of the world the you know um the orthodox views are taken a lot more seriously where some countries are a lot more liberal minded um mm -hmm. but that society and perhaps society needs to adapt um, i certainly think so now Awakening in chapter 20. This is very much a continuation, everybody, of the storyline in chapter 19. Joe is in hospital. Tyler is at his bedside following the incident. Um, or should I say attack, you know, a prejudice attack here. In your own experiences of life, Mark, does storylines of these two chapters, 19 and 20, do you see them happening on a regular basis? I see it happening uh, uh, on occasion uh, in that type of severity. Uh, uh, unfortunately, a suicide uh, is usually uh, uh, what uh, what triggers it. Uh, although 
uh, gay bashing and uh, uh, attacks uh, uh, on uh, gay people uh, happen, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, with regularity. Uh, the statistics, I, I don't know uh, what the statistics are, but uh, it is uh, uh, a, a bad uh, uh, scene uh, all the way around. Uh, um, again, like I say, it, it, it tears uh, apart uh, people, uh, people's lives. Uh, it tears apart society. Uh, and uh, it's... Uh, it's just so unnecessary. Uh, uh, we're supposed to be a nation of uh, of, of mostly identified Christians, but uh, I question how many people really follow uh, Christ's love. Uh, is not homophobia uh, just the total opposite uh, that that we should uh, be? caring for one another rather than uh, tearing them down. And uh, uh, the, the fact that uh, uh, Joey has this out-of-body experience, uh, well, uh, I do believe that uh, there is a, an existence beyond this one. Uh, my own mother, uh, I think, had uh, an out-of-body experience. Uh, she wouldn't talk about it, but after that experience, she wasn't afraid of dying. So she knew where she was going. And I think uh, that uh, we need to look at our lives and, and uh, say to ourselves, well, are we practicing the love of, of God and uh, the love that Christ showed uh, us? And that's, that's the problem that uh, I think a lot of people have. They don't realize that uh, homophobia does so much damage and uh, that they, it's, it's not part of Christianity. Uh, it's, it's not love. It's just the opposite. Uh, that's basically what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, I mean, the book is not just uh, about a uh, gay relationship. It's also, um, it's really about involving people who identify um, themselves, you know, different from others and just mm -hmm. really asking people to accept them for who they are, you know, trans people, people who identify themselves, um, you know, in a variety of ways. This is what the book is about, isn't it? It's yes. Uh, you, you, yes, you could fit uh, just about any uh, differentness uh, into uh, the book, uh, and the message would all come out the same, uh, whether you're uh, uh, whether it's sexual orientation, a uh, race, color, a uh, uh, religion, a uh, background, uh, any kind of difference. We're all different. I mean, even identicals are, are their own people. Uh, they're different uh, in some way or other. Uh, I think God loves diversity, and uh, that's. That's the thing that we should uh, celebrate is a, the diversity of the human species. We should celebrate the fact that we are all different rather than uh, trying to uh, make us all the same. Uh, you know, I, I've heard the argument that um, some people say, well, God created me gay. God created me as a trans person. God created mm -hmm. me. This is my um, biological makeup. This is who I am. I came, you know, I was born this way. Yeah. So surely people should be accepting that this is what, um, you know, this was God's plan that these people are the way they are. And we should accept that, get on with it, and embrace them. Yes. Is that a fair uh, comment. Yes. Uh, uh, the, the the thing is, it's it's. Uh, I feel a, a bit like being left-handed. Uh, most people are right-handed. Some people are left-handed. I think we are born with whatever sexuality we have. Uh, it can't be changed. It's pretty much been proven that. 
fact, but the whole uh, aspect of this religious uh, looking down on gay people is based on the idea that uh, it's a choice. It's not a choice. Uh, and the simplest definition of, of a sin is a willful disobedience to God. Notice I said willful. Uh, if it's not, a, not willful, it can't be a sin. So uh, being born uh, gay or bisexual or trans or whatever, it's not a choice. It's, it's the way we are. And uh, about, a, about every gay person I know, a, or non-straight person, they're just trying to get along in life just like everybody else. Sure. Who do you, um, you know, who would you like to see reading this book of yours? Well, uh, actually, two groups of people. Uh, the, the first group, of course, uh, are the kids that need the assurance that uh, they can be a Christian and gay. They are not uh, incompatible. The, the, the kids that are having trouble uh, rectifying their sexuality with the, the religious teachings that they have uh, been taught since they were little, uh, plus their families, uh, the, the second group is, is the, uh, those people who uh, actually do rail against the, the gay community. They need to read the book and, and uh, look at uh, uh, the uh, re references, look up those references, and hopefully maybe change their mind. Uh, of course, I, well, I, why I wrote the book under a pen name is because uh, I fully anticipate that if the, those type of people do get hold of the book, uh, that they'll probably, a, a, oh, who knows what, uh, a possibly retaliate against me. But that uh, is part of uh, being the messenger. Sure. So. Yeah. Do you have any more books in mind? Uh, and uh, right now, uh, I, I am working on a on writing my own autobiography, but uh, I don't know who would read it. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, I I don't know if I, uh, I I mean I started a, a little bit of a, like a second uh, story of a, a boy's tale. Uh, um, haven't uh, gotten too far with that. But uh, who knows, uh, uh, I'm always busy doing some kind of project and uh, I do uh, have time uh, to, to do writing. So it's whatever the inspiration hits me, uh, uh, I may just put out another book. You never know. You never know everyone. Where can people get your books from, Mark? Well, they can uh, get it uh, through uh, either my website, uh, aboystale.com, or uh, it's on Amazon. Uh, I do know that. Uh, it's it's a, a, a publish-on-demand book. Uh, you probably won't find it at your bookstore, but uh, they can order it. And it is uh, registered with the Library of Congress. There you go, everyone. Mark Rogers, it's yes. been a huge pleasure looking at your book, reviewing your book and having to chat to you over the last week or so. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's um, it's a thought-provoking book, everybody, but it's well worth a read. That's all I say. Thank you. Go to the website, go and have a look. Don't be prejudgmental. Mm -hmm. Keep an open mind and make your own choices. Yes, and it. Uh... Yes, and do do spread the word. I can I can stand all the publicity I can take. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Rogers, thank you very much for coming on my show. Oh, thank you. I've enjoyed it. Uh, uh, so. You're welcome. Okay. I'm JD Crowley. Thanks for listening, watching, wherever you're in the world. Until next time, stay safe. Mm -hmm.